folks, Russell Conte here with Soapbox. Thanks for joining me. Today I'd like to demonstrate to you how to make a men's classic fitted dress shirt. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Once we've cut our pieces for our fitted shirt, the first thing we're going to do is sew our darts. We have waist darts at the fronts, both sides, and we also have waist darts at the back. That's going to provide us a nice fit on the garment. Then we also have some shaping at the side seams. To sew our darts, we want to find that dart point at the top and at the bottom. And then we also want to find where it's going to be fullest. Place that on the machine. And I've got a little trick here that makes it a little bit easier sometimes to follow these diagonals. One of the first things to do is make certain your stitch length is appropriate. I drop mine down to about 1.5 millimeters. That way it's really tight at the beginning and the end and I don't have to back stitch. So I'm going to take a few stitches and then stop. Now, in order to be able to sew that straight line, if you have a long enough thread tail, what you can do is bring that thread tail around and bring it to the front. It provides a track for you to follow while you're sewing your dart. Thanks for real quick work. Check your dart point at the bottom. And then I can bring that thread right over here so I have my path to follow and continue sewing. And then I'm going to sew right off the edge at that dart point. I've sewn my darts into place, I've pressed them towards center back, and I will make a real quick note about darts. There's no cause for you to sew them at the beginning unless you know for certain that the garment's going to fit. You've drafted it for a person and that the darts are drafted for a particular body. Otherwise, if you just sew darts in arbitrarily, the garment may not fit. So it's better to sew them in afterwards, um, leave the garment flat, and then you can go ahead and pinch them to shape for the body you're fitting. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and put a pleat at the top. That's gonna to create some fullness here. Now, truth be known, I wouldn't typically place this on a garment that's also been fitted, but just for purposes of this practice, let's go ahead and show you how that's done. So I found my center point. I'm going to mark out an inch on either side. This is a one inch pleat, which simply means I'm going to need twice that amount in order to get the appropriate fullness. And so I'm going to just take this and fold it to the back. I'm going to bring these pins together so they match. And there we have the first pleat on the one side. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the other. Bring those together and then fold back. So what that's going to provide me is a one inch finish pleat with a half inch fold back on either side. Before I sew the yoke into place, I'm going to stabilize this simply by putting a stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge just to hold that pleat in place. Alternately, you can actually place this at the blade point. So if there were a dart here that came out from the shoulder point, it's about there, and then you can put a pleat at this point and you can put a pleat at this point. Just a matter of personal preference. So this is my pleat at center back. I've got it placed and I'm just going to anchor it close to the seam allowance, about a quarter of an inch away, to hold it in place before I sew the yoke into place. Once I've sewn my darts, I'm ready for my front pocket. Now, you can simply cut your pattern piece to size and then fold all those seam allowances back. But what I'd like to do is I cut out a template for myself without my seam allowances. I leave a seam allowance at the top, and then I take my fabric and I cut it too large, and I place my template. And I simply go over to the ironing board and I press everything into place. What that allows me to do is get really crisp edges all the way around. I'm going to take that out now, and I can mark my seam allowances and cut them to length makes for really clean, quick work that way. Once I've trimmed my seam allowances for my patch pocket for the chest on the front of the shirt, I'm ready to finish the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this to the inside. I'm going to open up my seam allowances, sort of fold it down on the fold line and then back up to the fold line. 
my case that's a double fold at two inches, so one inch each. I'll start close to the edge, back up first, come forward, and then stop at the bottom. At this juncture, before turning it face out, if you like, you can trim this excess seam allowance away. I don't think it's necessary in this case. My fabric is lightweight enough. It's not going to create any more grief. And then I'm going to go ahead and make certain I have a nice clean point on the edge of my pocket. Great. Now I'm ready for a nice press. Once we've pressed our pocket into place, we're ready to top stitch this hem closed. Okay, it's better to sew it from the face than the back, depending on your sewing machine. Depending on the thread tension and how it's set up on your sewing machine, it's not unusual for us to have a better top stitch on the, from the needle than from the bobbin thread. So if I sew this from the back side, I, it possibly won't look as nice from the front, although it'd be easier to sew it. So it's better to just sew it from this side. And if you're having difficulty trying to find that, you can feel for it, certainly, but you can also just place a post-it note or a magnetic seam guide. Both are equal, equally successful, and that way you'll be able to catch that stitch. Now again, when you're sewing this closed, don't start right at the edge. Start in a little, just a little bit. And I like to start right at my, inside of my quarter inch seam allowance. that stitched in place and I captured it really precisely at the edge here. I'm ready to place it onto my garment. So I've stitched the top hem in place on the pocket and I'm ready for placement. Here's my placement guides. Place this right there and right there. Once I get that placed, I'll pin it at that upper right hand corner. I like to pin at the point and the other corner. Now, depending on placement, placement is a matter of personal preference, and patterns often suggest placement. But for me, this is called the high point of shoulder. I typically, from the seam allowance on the high point of shoulder, I like to have it seven to eight inches down, and I like to have it about two to two and a half inches from center front. Center front is where the buttons or buttonholes are placed. Our chest pocket is pinned to the front of the garment in the place we want it, face up. I'm going to start on the inside edge. Now what I want to do is I want to start it in about a quarter inch from the edge. I'm going to back up first to the edge of the pocket, stopping about a sixteenth before the edge. Then come forward, and I'm going to come in a quarter of an inch of depth. That's my goal. And I'm going to drop the needle. I'm going to pivot to the top. We want to box this area here. We don't want to just sew a stitch at this point. If we sew just the edges right here, there could be a lot of stress on this pocket, and so we want to make certain that we have a box up here. If we don't, that stress will tend to rip the pocket away from the garment. Come straight up, stopping about an eighth to a sixteenth from the edge, whatever's comfortable for you consistently. We're going to come pivot and come across back to the edge. This is the edge of my pocket now. Now I'm ready to sew the balance of the pocket into place. Now when you come to corners and anywhere where you need to pivot, make certain your needle is in the fabric. If it's not buried in the fabric, what will happen is that you'll move and your corners will not be clean. Come all the way to the top edge where the corner is, and then we're going to pivot again. We're going to come in a quarter of an inch. We're going to pivot again and go down the edge. We want to stop where our prior sewing line is. Pivot to come toward the edge, back stitch, and take it off the machine. 
And there we have it. Hard to see in camera, but we've boxed this edge. We've come down, across the bottom, back up the side, came in a quarter inch, down and boxed that edge. And now these edges are nice and stable. It also hides your seam allowances. If you wanted to, you could actually take that and carry it all the way around the pocket as a style choice, but it's unnecessary in this case. Once I've sewn the chest pocket into place, I'm ready for my front plackets. Now my button placket is on the right hand side and my buttonhole placket is on the left. My buttonhole placket and button placket are both self, so they're going to fold to the back twice. The button side I'm only going to press just for reference, I'm not going to stitch it. Now you have a choice about that. You can top stitch this in place if you choose. In my case, when I'm finished with the gar garment, I'm going to sew my buttons on and my buttons will hold the placket into place. However, on my buttonhole side, I'm going to go ahead and fold this back, the double fold that I need, and then I'm going to top stitch on either side of that placket to hold it into place. That's just a style choice for my purposes. I'm going to sew about a quarter of an inch away from both edges just to anchor that. Once we've done that, then we're ready to take the fronts and attach them to the yokes. My center back pleat has been stitched into place about a quarter inch away from the edge. And now I'm ready to attach the yokes. I'm going to move this aside for a moment. I'm going to take the inside yoke face up, place it down. Then I'm going to place the shirt so that the yoke line fat matches. And then I'm going to place the outside yoke face down on top of it. We're going to sandwich the shirt between the two yokes. I'm going to pin this in place, then I'm going to sew it at a half of an inch away from the edge, then press my yoke up and into position. I pin my yokes to the shirt back, faces together, and a shirt sandwiched in between the yokes. I've aligned them at the side seam, at center back, and the side seam. There's no rule about how many times to pin, it's simply a matter of how many times you need to pin to hold it together successfully. What is important is you keep all those raw edges so that they match up continuously. So I'm going to check all my edges, make certain they're good to go, and I'm going to sew at my seam allowance. In my case, my seam allowance is one half of an inch. Use my regulation stitch length. For this way, the fabric is about two millimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this. Again, it's very important that all the edges align. So our yokes are sewn at the top, front and back, and we're ready for the next step. We prepared our front button and buttonhole plackets, and now I'm ready to sew the fronts to the back yoke. Now this is a multi-step process, and there's nothing complicated about it, just it's a little awkward when you first see it. I'm going to take my left front, I'm going to place it faces together with the back yoke. And I'm just going to pin to one layer. Once I pin this one in place, I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. My right garment side, face down, I'm going to pin it to the back yoke. Faces together. Great. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take all this front and I'm just kind of roll it up and get it out of my way. Keep it reasonably tidy and tight okay, so that it sits inside the yoke. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to fold it up and out of my way. Okay. And get that one up and out of the way into the side of the yoke. Now I'm going to take the back. I'm going to do the same thing. I need to roll this one pretty tight. I'm going to take the inside yoke. So I'm going to lift everything up here. I'm going to grab that inside yoke and bring it back. 
okay? So here's my back folded up into the top of the yoke, okay? My front pieces attached and laying there as well. Now I'm simply gonna take the back yoke face together and match all these edges up at the shoulder line. And carefully, I'm gonna sew the shoulders one half inch away from the edge. Trying not to capture the front or the back while I'm doing that. So I'm just gonna sew from here to here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Pin those in place. And sew my shoulder at the seam allowance, in my case, one half of an inch from here to here. Then I'll take everything out and pull it to the right side and we're ready for the next step. So my yokes are pinned in place. My fronts are sandwiched between the front and the back. And I'm gonna sew them in half of an inch. Now it's very important to sew these as accurately as possible. Making sure that all my edges align appropriately. So it looks a little odd when you're sewing it, but that's what it should look like. Eventually we'll pull the pieces face out and all your seam allowances will be encased. There will be no raw edges on the yoke. Our shoulder seams are sewn accurately and now we're ready to turn it to the right side and give it a nice press. I'm just gonna grab the fabric. I like to pull everything through the neckline myself, but that's a matter of preference. Grab the back. And it all feels a little awkward at first, but the nice thing about this technique is it encases all the raw edges on the yoke. There we go. And voila. There's our back, all of our case edges cleanly ca captured. Now we're ready to give this a nice press. And again, I don't press this first because if you're not really accurate in your sewing, then sometimes these don't align nicely. So we want to be as accurate as possible, but now I can go ahead and then give it a nice press at all the seams where they are encased. And then I'm ready for my top stitching. We're gonna to top stitch this upper line where the front shoulder meets the back shoulder of the yoke on both sides. And we're also gonna to top stitch the yoke where it meets the back of the shirt. The distance from the edge for your top stitching is a matter of personal preference. What I tell people all the time is symmetry is art. So if you're an eighth of an inch up here, make sure you're an eighth of an inch down here. My back yoke has been pressed into place and I'm ready for top stitching. I'm gonna use a quarter inch top stitch. Just use the edge of my foot as the guide and I'm sewing on the yoke side. Now our yoke is sewn, top stitched. I am ready to either inset my sleeves or I'm ready for my collar. I prefer to start with my collar. In order to start with my collar, what I'm going to do also is just make certain these two yokes at the top, at the back of the neckline, I'm gonna stitch them together so they act as one piece. Now my seam allowances are quite small, they're a quarter of an inch, so I'm gonna sew this in an eighth of an inch just to anchor those so that they don't move. And we are now ready for the collar. I've prepared my collar and my collar stand. My upper collar is interfaced. My inner collar stand, the one closest to your neck on the inside, is interfaced. The outer collar stand is not. I've trimmed my seam allowances on the sides in the upper portion of my collar. And then I clipped the corners here so that when I turn it face out, the corners are really sharp. My collar stand, the interfacing, I cut it to size and I leave excess fabric at the bottom so that I can turn that up. This is going to be stitched into place about three eighths of an inch away from the edge. Eventually it'll be attached to the collar stand here and sewn at a quarter of an inch. And then this eventually will be sewn attached here and sewn in a quarter inch away from the edge as well and turned to the right side. My inside collar stand has been prepared. I fused my interfacing to it. I've cut it to size. I'm gonna let a little excess fabric on the bottom so I can turn this up and I'm gonna sew it about three eighths of an inch away from the edge. That's gonna hold that in place as we get ready to prepare our 
collar. Now we can trim this excess fabric away if we like. On my collar, align those edges, pin in place if you need to, and I'm going to sew right along the edge of my interfacing. I don't want to capture the interfacing in my stitches, I want to sew right next to it. And I've cut my interfacing to size. So I know it's precise, even if my seam allowance here is a little bit off. I'm going to back up first. I've decreased my stitch length to about 1.8. And again, I want to sew right next to the interfacing, not through it. Now I've clipped the corner of the interfacing right here at the when I turn and pivot for the collar point. But there's another little trick I'm going to show you here as well that'll help you get those collar points turned out nicely. So one stitch before the end. I'm going to drop the needle in the fabric. I'm going to take a long piece of thread. I'm going to raise the foot up, leaving the needle in the fabric, and I'm going to separate the layers. I'm going to place this thread so that I'm basically flossing the needle. What I'm doing is creating a little anchor so later on I can take this thread and I can use that to help me turn this corner. And then I'm going to go ahead and take one more stitch to the corner. And then since I've got a full stitch, I'm going to go ahead and take this thread that's hanging out here. I'm going to bring it around here in between the layers and bring it to the inside edge. It's going to feel a little weird, but what again that's going to do is it's going to leave me a thread tail that I can grab later on when I'm trying to get these corners to turn out precisely. stop one stitch before the corner, raise my needle up, take a piece of thread and floss the needle. So all I mean is I'm separating the layers, I'm putting a piece of thread right up next to the needle, really stable and secure. Once I've done that I'm going to take one additional stitch to the corner, raise the foot up one more time, bring this thread around and to the inside little hook and then I'm going to pivot the corner. So now I'm ready to clip my seam allowances and turn to the face side and then press and I'll show you that in just a moment. I've trimmed all my seam allowances. I've clipped close to the corners and I press the seam allowances open. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to turn this face out. You want to be a little judicious about this. Don't rush it. Get that turned. I'm using a collar interfacing. It tends to be pretty starchy. Take a little stiletto. I'm going to kind of reach in here carefully and lift it out. Like it very close to the corner. Then that last little pull, remember those threads we left there? There's just one thread on there. Be very careful when you do this. I'm just going to pull on that to get that collar point really sharp and flat. And that's what those are for. Just be very careful when you do it because you can break the thread. Once you're done, just slip the thread off and you're ready to go. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. It's folded to the outside edge. I'm going to go ahead and lift carefully with my stiletto. mostly pulled out. I'm going to grab that one little thread and give it a nice tug. And there we go. Very clean collar points. Now I'm ready to press this. I'm going to favor it so that the seam allowances presses to the underside. Okay, and the underside is the piece that's not interfaced. And then I'm going to go ahead and top stitch the perimeter. I'm also going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from this open edge just to hold those together securely when I get ready to attach it to my collar stand. 
And a quick note when you're pressing, make certain you press away from the collar points. So from the collar points toward the center. If you press in this direction, you'll start to get little bubbles and puckers in those points. We don't want that. Now that we're pressed, we're ready for the top stitching. I'm going to top stitch from the face side of the collar, which is the interface side, and I'm going to stitch it a quarter inch away from the edge. And we're going to go ahead and sew this bottom closed just so it acts as one piece and I don't have any difficulty with it later on when I attach it to the collar stand. We only have a quarter inch seam allowance here, so make certain you're sewing this less than that. And now we're ready to attach it to the collar stand. I've pinned my collar stand to the collar, sandwiched, and the collar is sandwiched in between. We're going to go ahead and sew the collar stand now. Seam allowance is quarter of an inch. And again, I've cut my interfacing for my collar stand to size, so if I pinned it precisely, then I should just be able to sew right along the edge of my interfacing. Back stitch. And we are good. Now if we need to, we can trim these seam allowances. We'll see if I turn them to the space and see if they're giving me any trouble. And they're actually quite clean, so we're in good shape. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a nice press, and then we're ready to attach the collar stand to the shirt. Our collar stand has been attached to our collar, and now we're ready to attach it to the garment. So remembering that the interface side Okay, is the inside of the collar stand, and the interface side of the collar is the outside portion, so they're going to be on the same side. What we're going to do is we're going to take the non-interface piece of the collar stand and attach it to the yoke at center back, and pin that in place. And then we're just going to follow around to the edges. Now you're going to have a shoulder notch that's going to match here, okay, right about there. And then this is going to match right at the front. Now make certain that you keep your plackets turned back and that they match up identically at the front edge. And then we'll pin that all in place and we'll sew from edge to edge all the way around the curve. I've pinned my collar stand to my garment, okay? And the hardest part about this is getting this point right here at the front. Now regardless, our seam allowance in this case is a quarter of an inch. I want to make certain I really capture that right at the fold there so that when this folds back on itself, it's a really clean, tidy finish right there, okay? So just be very careful when you sew this that right where the intersection of the collar stands meet, front to back, make certain you're sewing right at that lip, okay? Now the next thing is once we get this turned over, because our seam allowance is quarter of an inch, we're going to want to go ahead and top stitch this. However, if I sew just at a quarter of an inch, it's likely I'm going to have to pull this a little bit more to grab it. So I like to sew this just a little deeper than a quarter inch. Whatever my seam allowance is, I might move over about a sixteenth of an inch just so that when I wrap this over, I can capture that other edge without fatiguing my fabric. So this is in place. When you're trying to get into these sharp areas, you know I'm always working with my stiletto and it will make your life a lot easier if you have one too. I want to make certain I get that captured very nicely. Good. And I'm going to back stitch to the corner and then come back forward. It's not unusual for me also to check my work, so I may just sew this one little section and then go back to verify that I've got it sewn correctly. Because if it's sewn incorrectly, now's the time to fix it. So I'm checking there, I'm going to fold it to the back and that's real clean so I'm in good shape. If it's not, then I should take that out and re-sew it. So again, I'm going to sew this ever so slightly deeper than a quarter of an inch, all the way around the perimeter. I do not want to capture the fold of the collar stand in there. And I want all my raw edges to align as nicely as possible.
Now we're coming to the other end, and it's very important that these edges align as well. So right where the collar stand is, is where the edge of the fabric needs to be for the placket at the front of the garment. So I want to make certain that I get those aligned precisely. Otherwise I'll have an odd intersection where the collar stand meets the garment. few extra hands at this point is always helpful. And then again, right where the intersection of the collar stand to the back collar stand, right there is where I want to sew to. I want to make sure I'm really clean about that. So even if it's not a precise quarter of an inch, make sure you're sewing right at that intersection. One stitch off the edge, then I'm going to back up and take it off the machine and check my work. So that's what we're looking for right there. We want that to be as clean as possible so when it folds back up inside, it's a really nice tidy front edge there. So we're ready to attach the collar stand to the shirt. We've got it sewn on one side. We now have to finish the secondary sti stitching. I like to start at center back. I sew about a quarter inch away from the edge and then I come down to the front, still about a quarter inch away, and then I sew it about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch away across the bottom. Now convention has it that the staple piece of fabric is always on the top, so this is interfaced, the back of it is not. So this is going to have more play, so we want to have that toward the feed dock, so that will give us a bit more control when we're sewing this. Again, I like to start at the center back at the top, that's just a matter of personal preference. tag of fabric I want to make sure it's buried underneath so I'm going to make sure that's in there before I get to it. Okay, when we come to the front, I got a little bit of a sharp corner right there at the top. And we're going to go ahead and pivot around that corner carefully so I get a nice curve. I'm going to come to the bottom and just before I get to the bottom I'm going to back stitch. I want to be about an eighth to a sixteenth away from the edge. Then what I want to do is I want to back up to the edge of the fabric without going off the edge. So I seal up that front corner and then come forward. Now here as we're sewing, our goal is really with that prior sewing line we can follow. I just want to overlap that ever so slightly so that I know I'm capturing the other side. You can pin if you need to. That's what we're doing. And then again, about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge is good. An eighth is fine. Still checking my work to make certain I'm capturing everything nicely. And overlapping that prior stitching line by about a sixteenth only. Just about to the end, I had already sewn this earlier, this portion. And there you have it. Our collar stand has been attached to the shirt, we're ready for a nice press, and now we're ready for the sleeves. Before we sew the sleeve to the shirt, we're going to go ahead and place the sleeve placket. We're working with a two-piece placket. The piece that's at the under part of the sleeve is the placket binding, and that's being placed face down. The sleeve is also face down, so face is down. We're going to place that right along the slit. And eventually, we'll sew this at a quarter inch away from the edge. We'll clip to it and we'll turn it to the right side. The placket itself is face down as well. It's going to be placed on the other side, sewn equidistant or one quarter inch away from the edge, and it's going to stop at the same place at the top. And we'll clip that and we'll turn both to the right side and we'll 
end up stitching that way. I placed my sleeve placket pieces, and again, the sleeve itself is face down. The placket pieces are also face down. We've got a sleeve placket binding that goes to the bottom part of the sleeve, and then the placket itself goes to the top. I've cut an opening here that's a quarter inch shorter than my placket binding and placket. And I'm going to sew it a quarter inch away from the edge to the op end of the opening. And so from here to here, which is roughly a quarter of an inch away from the end, there. There we go. Now we're ready to clip. Now we need to clip these edges up here so we can turn this successfully. So if you think of it like a bound buttonhole or a weld pocket, it's the same technique. We're going to cut on a diagonal, about a quarter inch down and up to the end of the stitching line. We want to clip to the stitching but not through it. So we're going on a little bit of a diagonal so we'll have a right angle piece right there. We'll have the same thing over here on the other side. go. Now we're ready for pressing. We're going to take this and take it to the inside edge. We'll press this underneath and press this underneath again. So I've prepared my sleeve placket binding. I have pressed this leading edge here to a quarter inch toward the inside. I pressed on this line as well so if you look at it from the wrong side that's what we're looking at now. Now we're going to take this and flip it and bring it to, through to the right side. On the face side here. And there's a line of stitching, our prior line of stitching, we want to overlap that ever so slightly. And we're simply going to stitch from top to bottom. So we're overlapping our stitching line here. Pin in place. So very close to this folded edge from bottom to top or top to bottom, whichever is more successful for you. You also want to keep these triangles folded up and out of the way if you can, so the ones in the back. Here's my sleeve placket. It's all been pressed. However, the order of operation here, I would press this portion of the sleeve placket that's been sewn to the opening first toward the face side so it's just laying flat. Then I'll press this leading edge over here, the long edge, a quarter of an inch under. That's all the pressing we're going to do for the time being. Then we're going to turn it to the front. Once we bring it to the front, we'll continue our pressing. So we want to press this, we will get this crease line here by aligning this fold line so that it ever so slightly overlaps the stitching line. We'll pin that in place and you can get a nice press on that line there. And we want that to be overlapped ever so slightly. Once we've pinned in place and got this nice clean pressed edge here, then we'll press the top. We'll press one edge of the top triangle and then we'll press the other to match. When you're doing the pressing, don't get in a hurry. Go ahead and press this edge, let it cool to set, then press the triangle on one side, let it cool to set, and the other, other one. If you try to rush through it and everything is hot and steamy, then by the time you get there it won't be a nice crisp finish. So I'm all pinned in place. Here's what it looks like from the back side. Just like that, our triangles are flipped up inside to give us this clean edge here. These align one on top of the other. Here's my sleeve placket binding, here's my sleeve placket, and I'm ready for sewing. Now the technique for sewing this, 
is coming up this edge here that we pinned all the way to the intersection of the triangle. Then we come up to the triangle, pivot, come back down the triangle. We're going to come down about an inch. We want to come down and we want to capture this raw edge here. I'm going to come down about an inch. Then I'm going to come back across. And then I usually just go back up here just to tack it. Now sometimes you'll see two bars here where they sew twice across. Just a matter of preference, not a right or wrong there. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this now and we're ready to go. So I'm going to sew the placket into place about a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. Make certain that all your pieces are in place, including your sleeve placket binding. Just be mindful that you don't want to sew through it. We want to make certain everything is in place when we come up to the bottom of the triangle. Stop at the triangle. We're going to pivot, get ourselves to the top of the triangle. Be mindful that all your pieces are in place so that this lays flat. We're going to pivot at the top of the triangle, come down to the other side. I'm still making sure that all my pieces are aligning correctly so this lays flat. If this is torqued at all, when you get ready to sew this, you're going to have some bubbling and distortion there. And then we want to come down about an inch. Again, we just want to make sure we capture that prior sewing line so that it doesn't stay raw. So if you come down to where your cut line is, that should be quite fine. In my case, I think I'm going to come down about an inch and a quarter. And then pivot across. typically go back up just a little bit to finish. And there's our placket. All been sewn. We've captured all the raw edges up inside here. We've sewn it here. And when you look at the back, that's what we have. It's very clean on the inside edge. My shirt is constructed, my sleeves are constructed, and they're ready to go. I haven't out added my cuff yet. That will come after we've attached the sleeve to the shirt. Now I'm using flat felt seams throughout and I have cut my seam allowances so that they're already pre-trimmed. What I do is I like to have a 3 8 inch finish flat felt seam on my armhole. So I'm going to cut my armhole on my garment with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to cut a seam allowance on my sleeve cap at 5 eighths of an inch. That's going to provide me the amount of space I need to be able to roll this toward the garment and get a nice 3 eighths inch finish. I will also have a flat fell finish on my side seam and I've already pre-cut them as well. I cut the front seam to half of an inch. I cut the back seam at quarter of an inch. I do the same thing on my sleeve. The front of the sleeve gets cut at half of an inch, the back at quarter of an inch. That's going to allow me to wrap them to the back and have a nice quarter inch finish for my flat fell seam for the side seam. Preparing to sew my flat fell seam on the sleeve, attaching it to the body of the garment at the armhole. And it's a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the sleeve. It's a quarter inch seam allowance on the garment itself when I'm attaching them here. One of the things that will make your life a little easier is to press that seam allowance on the sleeve cap toward the, ins the outside, the face side, 1 8 of an inch. If you do that, then you can simply align that fold with this, the armhole and then sew it a quarter of an inch and it'll be in perfect shape for what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and sew this. You can see how when I fold that over, these are aligning nicely. Makes for a little easier sewing when you're getting ready to do this flat fell seam for the first time. Bring this over here, make certain these align nicely. 
We want them to kiss one another. We don't want them to overlap. We want our notches to match, and they are matching. Just remember that your sleeve is curved, and the armhole is curved as well, but they're in opposite directions, so it can be a little awkward. Now we're ready to take it over the ironing board and we're going to press the seam allowance toward the garment like this and see we've already got it pressed underneath and then we're going to come back through and we're going to top stitch close to this edge but we want to do it from the face side of the fabric if we can. It's going to give us a more successful finish. I'm ready to sew my flat fell seam on the sleeve cap and what I've done is I've pressed it to the back and then I've used a bead of what's called Roxanne's glue based right along the edge here and then I heat set it so it'll stay it makes it for more successful sewing. Now I have the option of sewing from the inside or the outside but truth be known it's always going to be better to sew from the outside. Number one because your stitch quality is likely to look better from the front side or the needle side of the garment but otherwise also there's a lot of excess ease in here because of the fold back and the turn back with the sleeve cap and so if I sew from the top by virtue of the feed dogs, the feed dogs will help pull it through more successfully for me. My goal is to sew this at 3 eighths of an inch. And you can place the sleeve, you can place it any way that makes it more successful for you to sew it. sew this so that there's no tension on it. I just want to keep it pulled taut in this direction, this direction, but I also want to make certain it's not pulling away from me. And I'm going to sew it at three eighths of an inch away from the edge. The goal is ever so slightly to capture the stitch, the folded edge on the back. We've sewn a flat fell seam across the edge here, and it's on the garment portion, not the sleeve portion. When I turn to the inside edge, you can see I cap just captured the fold. And that's our goal. We want it to keep it as neat and tidy as possible. I'm preparing to sew the side seams. I'm using a flat fell seam finish for this, and I want them to finish at a quarter inch when they're done. For my purposes, I've cut my seam allowance for the front of the garment at half of an inch. I've cut my seam allowance for the back of the garment at the side at a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to make certain that this aligns with the foot at a quarter inch and that the back is at one half inch on the plate. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way to the top. It's not a right or wrong to that, however. You can do it in any fashion that works for you. Now I'm going to take this to the ironing board. I'm going to press the seam flat and over, and I'm going to roll that raw edge to the back, and then I'm going to top stitch that in place. I'm sewing my flat fell seam for the side, starting at the bottom and working my way toward the sleeve. Once you get into the sleeve area, it gets very tight in there because it's a smaller circle, so it's easier to start at the bottom and work your way toward the top. I've cut my fusible for my outside cuff to size without seam allowances, and then I cut my seam allowances all the way around a quarter of an inch, but I leave about an inch at the bottom. I'm going to fuse that, and I'm going to press this up, and I'm going to sew that about three-eighths to a half an inch away from the edge, then trim the excess away. Once I've done that, I'm going to place those on top of one another, and I'm going to sew them together on this side. We'll then be prepared to attach it to the sleeve. 
I've prepared my cuff. It's ready to attach to the sleeve. I'm going to sew it from the inside. So the inside of the cuff, which is the uninterfaced piece, and the inside of the sleeve, I'm going to sew there. Now before you sew it, verify that the length of the cuff and the sleeve match. Every once in a while the sleeve will be longer or shorter. If it's longer, we can take up more pleat. If it's too short, we can release some of the pleat. So now when we get ready to sew, again, it's going to be the face side or the inside of the cuff to the inside of the sleeve. I'm going to start the one side of the placket or the placket binding. And I want to make certain I capture right at the intersection right there. Okay, so even if it's your seam allowance is half of an inch and this happens to be 3 eighths, make certain you sew this at 3 eighths. Um, it's important that these align really correctly because if I can't sew deeper, but I, if I too, sew too shallow when I turn it, I'm not going to have I'm going to have an opening there that I want to avoid. So now make certain the edges align. I'm going to get it on the machine. I'm going to come forward about a quarter of an inch. As is my habit, I like to back up to my first stitch. I'm going to drop the needle and then I'm going to move the top layer out of the way. I'm going to sew back to that intersection, one stitch off the edge of the fabric, and then back on. Now I'm ready to continue my work. As we come across the pleats, make certain you have them aligned correctly, otherwise they'll be askew once you've sewn them. If it's helpful, you can base them a little higher, like an inch away from the edge first. As long as you're mindful about it, it should be fine. My seam allowance is half of an inch. To begin top stitching, I'm going to fold this back. I'm going to make certain that it's overlapping my prior sewing line about a sixteenth of an inch, and then I'm going to sew at a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge, all the way around the perimeter. Now instead of turning all my fabric and bringing it through the machine, I just need to backstitch, but I need to backstitch into the cuff. And so I can just pivot my fabric back and backstitch this way. And remove it from the machine, we're good to go. So there we are, perfectly sewn, sixteenth of an inch away from the edge, and we're ready for buttonholes and hems. For men, the buttonhole placket is on the left portion of the shirt. So our buttonholes are going to go in this portion. The buttons are going to go on the right portion. For me, I like to start my first button in fullest part of the chest, and then I divide and conquer. So I decide how far that distance is to my top button at the collar stand. I take that, I divide it in half, and that becomes my distance for each of the buttons. Typically for me, it's about three to three and a half inches for a fitted shirt. If it's a casual shirt with more ease, we can afford more space between and fewer buttons. It's a matter of personal preference. I tend to use about a 3 8 inch size button for myself, and I place them first at the chest, I divide and conquer and bring them down. Now as we get toward the hem, we want at least the distance between the buttons plus a little excess for that. For the cuffs, we're going to follow the pattern instructions for that, but my trick, I simply fold it in half to find the center point and then I fold and I find the center point of the placket. And so I come up here and then I go in from that position and that gives me my position for my buttonhole there. If the placket is short enough, you don't need a secondary buttonhole here. Sometimes people place one there if the placket is very long, just to keep that closed. Hey, thanks for joining me at the Soapbox today. I hope you found the information helpful. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can. In the meantime, have a great day sewing.